In part A, we are asked, what is the equivalent capacitance of this set of capacitors? There are no numbers per se given in the question. We are only told expressions for each capacitor. So for example, C1 was equal to 3C, C2 was equal to 1C, and C3 was equal to 5C. So we're gonna have to sort of deal with that aspect of the problem. And to find the equivalent capacitance here, we're going to be following these two equations right here. Now, which one we choose, of course, will depend on whether we have ourselves a parallel combination versus a series combination. So for example, to get things started, let's consider these two capacitors right here. You wanna ask yourself, are those in series or are those in parallel? If they were in series, they would basically be right next to one another in a sort of continuous line like that. If they're in parallel, then there is some sort of junction between them. So for example, this sort of picture here would indicate parallel capacitors. There's a junction between them. This right here would be a junction and so would this. The ones that we've highlighted in yellow down here, C2 and C3, hopefully it's clear that those are indeed in parallel with one another. And so we're going to follow the parallel combination formula. We can see that that formula simply tells us to add the capacitance values together. So for these two right here, which we might call C2 comma three, we're simply going to add their capacitances together. We're gonna to take the value for C2 and add it to C3. We know C2 is equal to C, and C3 is equal to 5C, and so together they make an equivalent capacitor whose capacitance is equal to 6C. Now, after you combine them algebraically, what you wanna do is combine them into a new drawing. So here's the battery, here's C1, which so far has just been watching our work, and now that we've combined the C2 and C3 capacitors, we're gonna make a new one here. This is our C2 comma three, we know that that capacitance is equal to 6C. C1 is still 3C. So you always wanna make a new drawing after combining any two or three, et cetera, capacitors. Now we wanna combine these capacitors here. Now these are in series, there is no junction here because as we travel from C1 to the other capacitor, it's one continuous pathway to get there. So those are in series and the series combination equation is a little dicier it's not as simple as just adding them. You have to add the reciprocals, and then we'll see you have to reciprocate that result. So to get the equivalent capacitance for these two capacitors, we're going to say one over CEQ is equal to one over C1 plus one over C2 comma three. So let's go and plug in the values here. C1 has a capacitance of three C, and then we have the other capacitance of 6C. To add these together, we're gonna to need to find a common denominator. So we'll multiply this denominator by two as well as its numerator. So now we have on the right-hand side, two over 6C plus one over 6C. We can now add them together because of their common denominator. We get three over 6C. And now what I like to do at this point is to flip both sides of the equation. So I'm gonna flip those around and flip those around. When you flip one over CEQ, you just get CEQ. And then on the other side, you're gonna have six C divided by three. And if we simplify that, we're just going to get two C. So in summary, the equivalent capacitance of all three capacitors is equal to two C. This is the correct answer to part A of the question. Let's go back and see what part B wants of us. Part B says to state the ranking of the capacitors according to the charge they store from largest to smallest. Now, to talk about charge, we're gonna to have to consider this equation right here. And in fact, if we're gonna look at that equation in terms of charge, we might also wanna solve it for charge. So if we multiply both sides of that by delta V, those delta Vs would cancel. And we can see that another version of this equation is that the charge equals C times delta V. So we're gonna keep that equation in mind along with its original form. Now to use the charge equation, we gotta go back and take a look at our diagram here. Remember we said that after you combine capacitors algebraically, you wanna combine them into a new drawing. So our final drawing would actually look something like this. We have one capacitor whose capacitance we just figured out is 2C. And then we have this battery right here, and we can call the potential difference supplied by that battery delta V. 
Now the charge equation tells us that within this simplified circuit, the charge would equal the capacitance multiplied by the potential difference. So here we're gonna take a capacitance of 2C and multiply that by delta V. We don't know any of these values, of course, so that's what makes this a little cumbersome. So that would be the total charge stored on the plates of the capacitor right here. It would be this value. Now, what we're gonna do is work our way backwards through the circuit. And this is a common maneuver that you will employ in these questions. Now, when we work our way backwards, so in other words, when we go from this picture back to this picture, you'll notice we're moving backwards to two capacitors that we said were in series. Now when you do that, what you're gonna always do is carry back with you the value of the charge. So the charge that we obtained on this capacitor of 2C delta V, that's going to be the charge on each one of these capacitors here as well. So we can say that the charge on the capacitor 2, 3 is equal to 2C delta V. We can also say that the charge on this capacitor is equal to 2C delta V. Very good. So that's something you want to keep in mind as you move your way backwards through the circuit. Now, before we continue to move our way backwards through the circuit, we want to figure out what the delta V is on each of these two capacitors. Now, we can go back to this equation here. Let's see. Yeah, we would need an equation for delta V. So why don't we divide both sides of this by C? And if we do that, we can see very clearly, I hope, that delta V is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. So charge divided by capacitance, that means here that the delta V on this capacitor would equal the charge, which is this value, the 2C delta V, divided by the capacitance, which is 6C. Now if you simplify that, the C's will cancel and you can reduce the two over six. So you're gonna end up with delta V over three. And then doing something similar over here, it's a little crowded I admit, but for this capacitor right here, the delta V one would equal the charge, which is two C delta V, two C delta V divided by the capacitance, which is three C. Now the C's would cancel there and you would get two delta V over three. Okay. So again, a little cluttered, but we have everything. We've got the charge, we've got the capacitance, and we have the delta V on that capacitor right there. And then we have the corresponding values for this capacitor here, the capacitance, the charge, and the delta V. All right, now we're gonna move backwards one more time. We're gonna clear out some space here. And we're gonna move our way backwards to the original circuit. Now you'll notice that this capacitor right here is exactly the same as this capacitor right here. So we can basically just copy and paste the values. We figured out that the charge there was 2C delta V, and then we figured out that the potential across that capacitor was 2 delta V over 3. So that's all good. Now the other two, these guys here and here, well, let's see what's going on there. So we're going from this capacitor backwards to those two. And you'll notice that as we move backwards, we're going back to a parallel arrangement. We said already that those are parallel. So here's another tip. When you go backwards to a parallel set of capacitors, don't bring the charge, but instead bring the delta V value. Bring that with you. So in other words, the delta V across capacitor three is going to be that delta V over three, and the delta V across capacitor two is also going to be delta V over three. So you bring the delta V value backwards to a parallel arrangement of capacitors. We need the charge. Let's not forget that charge was equal oh, to C delta V. So you're basically going to be multiplying the C value by the delta V value to get charge. So that means that the charge on capacitor three would be five C times the delta V over three. We'll maybe put the over three right there. And then the charge on capacitor two would be the capacitance of C times the delta V, which was delta V over three. 
Okay, a lot of work, but we're gonna finally be able to answer a lot of these questions. So back to part B, it said to state the ranking of the capacitors according to the charge they store from largest to smallest. So we're looking at part B, we're looking at charge. Let's highlight some of the charge values. So on capacitor one, it was this value, on capacitor two, it was that value, and on capacitor three, it was that value. So you'll notice that Q1 is going to be the greatest because it has a value of two C delta V. And then the next greatest looks like it's going to be Q3 because its charge value was five thirds times the C delta V. And then the smallest amount of charge will be on Q2 because its charge was just one third times the quantity C delta V. You can see that one third here if you put a little one right there. So this would be the correct answer to part B in ranking the charges. Now to part C, it says to rank the capacitors according to the potential difference across them from largest to smallest. Luckily, we've done potential difference already. Let's highlight them in blue here. So here's the potential difference for capacitor one. Here is the potential difference for capacitor two. And here is the potential difference for capacitor three. Now what's interesting is that the largest potential difference is going to be the potential difference across capacitor one. It has a value of two thirds and that's two thirds times delta V. Okay, now that's gonna be greater than the potential difference across capacitor two whose value is only one third delta V. One third delta V. But then that's gonna be equal to the potential difference across capacitor three because that also has a value of one third delta V. So there's a bit of a tie there going on. So this would be the correct answer to part C of the question. Okay, finally, we're getting to part D. It says, assume that C3 is increased. Explain what happens to the charge stored by each capacitor. So to answer this final part, what we have is the original circuit here. Remember, they're telling us that C3 is going to increase in value. So one tactic would be to change the value of that capacitance to increase it and see what happens. So why don't we try that? Why don't we change 5C to 8C? You could pick any number as long as it's larger than 5C. And we're gonna to begin to combine these now. So we'll do this all over again. We're gonna combine these two. These are in parallel, so you can just add their capacitances together. You might cut out some steps here. So this is still C1 is equal to 3C. We've added those two together, so 1C plus 8C is gonna give us 9C. And this we can call C2 comma three. This is equal to 9C, we'll call this delta V. Now the series are gonna be added using the reciprocal law. So one over CEQ would equal one over three plus one over nine. If we add these together, we're gonna to have to find a common denominator. So one third plus one ninth in terms of a common denominator would be four ninths. And we forgot the C's here, that was silly. So this would be four over nine C and then we reciprocate both sides and we get 9 fourths C as the equivalent capacitance. So if we draw that circuit in its final form, we would have just a single capacitor here. And this is what we'll just call CEQ is equal to 9 fourths or 9C over 4. Okay, we have to work our way backwards eventually. We're going to go ahead and first calculate the charge on that capacitor. We'll just call that QEQ. Remember, charge is capacitance times delta V. So that would be the charge on that equivalent capacitor. When we work our way backwards, the charge will carry with us. So we're gonna carry that charge with us of 9C delta V over four. And this would now also be the charge present on this capacitor. In fact, we can already answer a question here because this charge on capacitor one is known. It's 9C delta V over four. If you divide nine by four on a calculator, you're gonna get 2.25C delta V. Remember the original charge on Q1, if you go back up to our picture, 
the original charge on Q1 was 2 times C delta V. Well, this is now bigger because it's 2.25 C delta V. So we can already conclude here that Q1 will increase. So that's part of the answer to part D. Let's find out what happens to the other charges. And to do that, we're going to have to examine this capacitor right here. And we're going to need to calculate the delta V, the potential difference on that capacitor. We know that delta V is equal to the charge over the capacitance. So to get the delta V here, we're going to take the charge. Oh, this is going to get fun, huh? It's 9C delta V over 4, and then put that over the capacitance, which is just 9C. Okay, so a little bit algebra simplification here. The C's are going to cancel. It looks like the 9's are going to cancel as well. So you're going to get delta V over 4. And then we can move our way back up to the original picture. We're moving from this yellow capacitor to these two in parallel. Remember that when we do that, move back to parallel, you're going to bring the potential with you, the delta V over 4. So this means that delta V 3 is delta V over 4 and delta V2 is also delta V over 4. And then finally, we can get the charges. Let's start with C3. We know the charge Q3 will be the product. You're just going to multiply the capacitance by the potential difference. So you're going to have 8C times delta V over 4. You're going to reduce that to 2C delta V. We'll come back to that in a second. And then finally, Q2 is going to be the capacitance of 1C multiplied by the delta V over 4. Okay, so let's go back and get the original charges, Q2 and Q3. Q2 was 1 third C delta V. It is now 1 fourth C delta V. So sadly for Q2, its charge will decrease. And then the original charge, Q3, had a value of 5 thirds C delta V, 5 thirds C delta V. Now its value is 2 C delta V. So it actually has gone up in value. So the charge Q3 will indeed increase. And those are the correct answers to part D. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But if not, I always appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos.